Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadia and Sands. This, of course, is learn how to edit stuff. And why, yes, I have read every single comment that you've posted about making another TikTok tutorial, this time about the play date edit. We need to know how to make more play date edits. No, you don't, but you know what? You come to the right place, because I'm gonna show you anyway. If you're not already following me on TikTok, I highly recommend it, at Nadia and Sands. I post, eh, kind of whenever I want, but if you follow me, you would have seen this gem earlier today. That is not the Playdate music that I've heard on TikTok so many times. That is some cheap chiptunes MIDI ripoff version of the real thing. Yeah, I know. I made it in Ableton Live so I can monetize this video on YouTube. Sue me. I want my $11 in ad rev. So yeah, in the video description below, you will find a download link to this magnificent track, but it serves more than one purpose, okay? The purpose that it serves is that you can export this out of After Effects, and when you import it onto TikTok, it will line up exactly with the real song so that you you can just use it as timing reference like we're gonna do in today's tutorial. I get my $11 and it just makes your life easier. Wow, Ian, you really do think of everything, don't you? All right, I'm excited to get started. You have downloaded the amazing song in the video description below. You are also opening up After Effects because you and I have a play date. All right, let's jump in. All right, I am excited. First things first, let's start a new composition at 1080 by 1920. You guys are used to seeing 16 by nine, but instead this time it is nine by 16, which is vertical video format. Haha. -ha. Anyway, frame rate 23976 and duration 15 seconds. Click OK. It will start your new sequence looking great so far. The next thing you're gonna do is drag and drop the Playdate timing track into After Effects, then drag and drop that onto your timeline. Now what you're gonna do is import whatever video you're gonna use to make the play date edit. Now you might have your own slow motion video of you dancing by yourself. You might be taking it from somewhere else. Whatever the case is, bring it into After Effects. If you're doing what I did, which is a Mark Ruffalo edit, I highly doubt you're doing a Mark Ruffalo edit, but maybe you're downloading a video from YouTube and bringing it into After Effects, similar to me. So this is how I think you should go about it. Take your video, drag and drop it into After Effects, then just take that video and drag it and drop it right onto this new composition button. It will start a new composition. And then what I want you guys to do is just kind of scrub through the video until you find a place in the video that you want to use in the actual video itself. So once you find a clip that you want to use for your play date edit, click on that layer and hit Shift Control D to split it in After Effects and then scrub a little bit farther forward, not too far, and then hit Shift Control D one more time. And basically you're going to segment out a bunch of little slivers of video all throughout the duration of your timeline. Again, yours is gonna look different than mine. You may have more, you may have less. The concept is still the same. And so this is what I have. I have all of these little slivers of video all throughout the duration of this big long video that we are going to use to formulate the play date edit. Now, I do have a time-saving tip for you. Click on the topmost layer, hold down shift, click on the bottom most layer, and then come right over here to this little megaphone thing and just click it once and it will turn the audio off for all of the video layers. That is gonna be helpful when you copy and paste it to your other composition. That way the audio won't show up with the video and it just saves a little bit of time. Let's start by copying this first clip that I'm going to use in my Playdate edit. Control C on the keyboard, coming over to our composition, click on our audio layer, hit LL like LL Cool J on your keyboard, and let's navigate over to this first kick drum, which is where our video is going to start. And I know what you guys are thinking, Ian, I'm just gonna hit Control V. Well, absolutely not, because After Effects actually takes the time code when you just do a normal copy paste. So right now, After Effects is copying from 37 seconds and 22 frames, and over in our new composition, it's only 15 seconds long so we never actually see the video. Here's another quick tip for you. Hit Control Alt V on your keyboard and that will paste in place right where your playhead is so then that way you don't have to go searching or extending your composition length. Bada bing, we're learning a lot of stuff here in this episode. Let's scale this guy up and let's just move it right down here. Get it to a nice, comfortable position for yourself. Again, your video will look different than mine, but the concept is still the same. Once you've positioned your video in the frame, the next thing you're gonna do is just kind of scrub through and make sure that the shot doesn't change. So it goes from the shot from the movie straight to Mark Ruffalo's forehead. We don't want that, so I'm gonna just trim it back so we don't get confused. Now, the next thing you're gonna do is come right over here to the front, right click on your clip, and come up here to Time Enable Time Remapping. 
Once you do that, nothing really happens until you set a keyframe. So come over here and set a keyframe at the very beginning of your layer, and then come right down here to the end and set another keyframe. Now, basically how time remapping works in After Effects is you stretch the time between two points. And by setting these keyframes right down here, you are just marking in the timeline, the start and the end time code for your video. And now that allows us to kind of stretch everything in between. And that's how we're gonna do those nice speed ramps. You guys thought this was gonna be a play date edit tutorial, but really what I'm trying to do is give you a time remapping tutorial so that the next time you see a time remapping effect done in any video, you'll know how to do it and I'm the guy to thank. Let's keep going. So basically now what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to find a point in the video that you want to be your fast portion of the video. So I'm just gonna fast forward here and right when he puts the piece of popcorn or whatever in his mouth, I'm going to set another keyframe here. And then I'm just gonna drag this over closer to my first keyframe. So these two keyframes are gonna be fast and then it's gonna slow down until we get to the end. So let's listen to this real quick. All right, so right now our clip is a little bit long and it's actually going to switch to another clip right here at this beat in the music. So what I'm gonna do is just take this last keyframe and drag it over to the right. And that's actually gonna slow our video down by a significant margin. All right, looking pretty good. I'm actually gonna trim this layer back to this beat right here so we don't get it confused. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is highlight those keyframes, hit F9 on the keyboard, then right click on that layer and go to frame blending, pixel motion. And that is actually going to blur all of our frames together and have it look really nice when it's slowed down. We're not using Twixter. I'm not gonna have you buy a $300 plugin for After Effects. We can use pixel motion inside of After Effects and it will do kind of the same thing with footage that wasn't originally slow motion. So we've done the pixel motion and the slowdown. The last thing that I want you guys to do is click on where it says time remap, then come right over here to the graph editor. And we're just gonna smooth out these keyframes. Now, raise this Bezier handle a little bit, hold down shift, click and drag out to the left. So it goes fast and then it's gonna go slow. So I'm gonna take this last Bezier handle right here and just click and drag it down. So now this part of the video is actually going to go nice and slow. All right, it's looking pretty good so far. Let's go to our master sequence and let's grab our next clip. I'm going to use this one from Shutter Island. Control Alt V to paste in place. Then we are going to scale this up one more time. Right click, time, enable time remapping and immediately set a keyframe. Go down here and let's set a keyframe somewhere down towards the end. And then we're gonna just scrub through right where he turns his head right there. Look at that Mark Ruffalo smile, what a cutie. Set another keyframe and just drag this over towards the front. And we're gonna just drag this out like that. Highlight these keyframes, F9, right click, frame blending and pixel motion. I think you guys might be seeing a pattern here now. Click on time remap, go to the graph editor. And again, we are just gonna smooth this puppy out. So a little bit fast on the entry, slow down just a bit and slow this down. Let's play it. Nice, we actually can just move this keyframe over a little bit by clicking, holding down shift and dragging to the right. Looking really good. On this next kick, we are going to cut the layer. I can either hit shift control D to split the layer and then click on this and delete it. Or what I can do is just click on that layer and hit alt and the right bracket on my keyboard, which will trim it. And then I can just manually trim it one more layer. Now, spoiler alert, I'm not gonna do the entire video that I posted on my TikTok in this tutorial. Basically, what I want you guys to do is understand how time remapping works in After Effects because that will help you make your own playdate edit. So let's kind of rewind and talk about what we've done so far. So far, we have made a 1080 by 1920 composition, which is vertical video, okay? That is one thing that you certainly need on TikTok. The second thing we did was find all of our clips that we wanted to use in this Playdate edit, and then we started time remapping. Enable time remapping in After Effects, then set a keyframe at the very beginning and at the very end, and then everything in between you can manipulate. Highlight all those keyframes, hit F9, then right click on the clip and go to frame blending, pixel motion, and that will give you kind of a twixter type effect in After Effects without having to buy an expensive plugin. You're definitely gonna wanna finagle with the graph editor a little bit. That's gonna smooth everything out and give it that nice flowy kind of speed rampy motion that you're used to seeing in all of these play date edits. So now that you have that information, I want you guys to go and finish out the rest of the song. I'm gonna do the same and let's tune back in here when it's all done. And welcome back to the Playdate Edit tutorial. At this point, you may be going crazy doing all these time remaps, but if you've made it this far, if you've done everything up until this point, congratulations, I'm super proud of you. We're not done yet. We are just getting started. No, 
Well, we're about halfway through. All right, let's jump back in. So this is what I came up with while you guys were working on yours. I think it's kind of funny when you do the little repeated four thing at the end. Anyway, uh, so now it is time to make our freeze frame at the very beginning. So take your very first clip, go ahead and duplicate that on top of itself by hitting Control D on your keyboard, then hit Shift Control C to pre-compose. Make sure that move all attributes into new composition is selected. Click OK, then right click on that layer and go to time freeze frame. Hit Shift Control D to split the layer, then delete the right half of the split. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a nice freeze frame leading all the way up until our video actually starts. Now here is where it might get a little dicey for some of you, all right? I'm gonna ask you to take out your phone and record the screen, move the phone over across the screen, and then line up your vertical composition with your phone camera, okay? It's gonna take a little bit of coordination here, but I promise we're gonna do it together. I'm gonna do it live in real time right now, all right? Here we go. I have hit record on the camera, and now what I'm gonna do is just hit play on my timeline and then move the camera over and just record the screen. Here we go. All right, that's it. And now what you're going to do is you're going to send that file to yourself, either via Dropbox or email. Just make sure that it doesn't compress it too much. And then you're going to take that file and bring it back into Adobe After Effects. So I'm going to do that right now, upload it to Dropbox, and then let's meet back here in just a second. All right, guys, I've got that video file now in After Effects. I'm going to drag and drop that onto the top of my composition. And the easiest way to line all of this stuff up is just to scrub all the way down here and look for when your video starts moving, all right? Because that's gonna directly line up with the video moving inside of After Effects. So this is kind of at the point where my video starts moving. I'm gonna go to the moving frame, hit Shift Control D to split the layer. And then I'm just gonna delete this one just to keep it nice and tidy. Then come right over here to where my video starts to move and just line that up right here. And then just drag this out back to the beginning. And of course, turn off the audio for that frame so we don't get any weird frame blend. And then once this video starts to move right about there, I'm just gonna trim this layer back, just like so. And now let's look at what we got. All right, so now we've got that transition looking pretty good. So what we can do actually is slowly scale this up a little bit more. So we're just gonna add a little bit of pizzazz to this. So I'm gonna set a scale keyframe right here and then go right over here to where the frame cuts and set another scale keyframe and just scale this up a little bit so it's filling the frame. Then what I'm gonna do is zoom in here real quick and just go one frame over hit T on the keyboard to bring up the opacity and just turn this opacity down to, I don't know, 30 or 40%. So I can see the layer underneath it. And then what I'm gonna do is just line up my layer underneath it exactly with my phone video so that the transition seems super, super seamless. Not a lot of people actually do this for some reason and I'm really confused as to why because it does look so much better. So now I'm gonna turn this layer opacity back up to 100 and just trim this back one more frame just like so. And now we have a nice little transition into our play date edit. Now another thing you can do to really spice this up, see how bright and contrasty this is because it's coming from my phone video? You should make the video right after it equally bright and contrasty. So I'm gonna come up here to my effects and presets and type in Lumetri. And I'm gonna drop a Lumetri color right on that layer. And then under basic correction, I'm just going to turn the exposure up. Not too crazy. Something that looks reasonable. And then bump the saturation just a little bit as well. So now if I toggle back and forth between these two frames, it actually looks like it fits a little bit better instead of it going to complete darkness, all right? So this is our saturated and brightness. Without that on, it looked like this, which always seems really jarring every time I see this effect done. So you might as well just compensate since we're taking the time to do this anyway. All right, so if you guys wanted to, as an added bonus, you could also add an adjustment layer in here to do a little flash as it goes into the transition. You can come up here to layer, new adjustment layer, and make sure you throw that guy right on the very top. Hit alt in the left bracket to trim that layer back and maybe go over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight keyframes, let's call it. And then we can trim that layer back, come over here to the very start and come up here to your effects and presets and type in levels. Drop a levels adjustment right onto that adjustment layer. Set a keyframe for the histogram. Come over here to the very end, click on that layer, hit U, and then set another keyframe for the histogram and then come over to our very first keyframe. And we're just gonna turn the input white value down so that it kind of flashes in on that transition. So just like this. 
and it's not doing a whole lot, but it is kind of initiating that transition in a nicer way. All right, I'm feeling very happy and very confident with this Playdate edit. So what I'm gonna do now is just export it out of After Effects. And I like to export it as a ProRes file, then run that file through Adobe Media Encoder, then put it back on Dropbox, download it to my phone and get it onto TikTok. So I'm gonna very quickly run you through that process. Make sure the end of your composition lines up with the end of your frame here by just dragging this little bar all the way over to the left so it meets all of your layers just like so. And then come up here to File, Export, Add to Render, queue and then we're going to click on this output module right here and you guys are going to set your settings to QuickTime up here under format we're going to change our channels from rgb and alpha to just rgb go to format options and select apple prores 4444 that's going to give you the highest quality export out of after effects as possible and then you're going to output to wherever you want to save that file on your computer so i'm going to call this tiktok prores and save and then come right over here to render and let after effects render it out once you've exported it out of After Effects, go ahead and open Adobe Media Encoder. If you don't have Adobe Media Encoder, you might just have to install it on your computer using the Creative Cloud app. It's a great little program to convert files. I highly recommend using it for pretty much everything all the time, if you can. It will come up here and your preset might be different than mine. Go ahead here and click on whatever your preset name is. And we are going to navigate to our presets and go to Vimeo 1080 Full HD. And then we're going to change our basic video settings right here to 1080 by 1920. And click on this little checkbox that says use maximum render quality and scroll down a little bit and also render at maximum depth. And then you can name this whatever you want. Click save, click OK, and then come right up here and click on this little play button. That will run it through Adobe Media Encoder and kick it out to an MP4 file. And then you're going to take that MP4 file right here, Final TikTok. And for me, I'm going to upload that to Dropbox and then download it onto my phone. From there, I'm going to go onto TikTok. I'm going to upload it to TikTok using the play date edit that is built into TikTok. And if you've done everything right up until this point, that audio will match up exactly with everything that you've already done with the timing track. The only thing you'll need to do is take the original sound from the video and turn the slider all the way down so you can't hear any of the original audio and just crank that TikTok audio. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, once you've hashtagged the life out of this video, you have just done a lot of work to make a TikTok, but hey, it looks really good. I am proud of you for making this TikTok, but what I'm most proud of, that you don't even know, but what I'm most proud of is that you learned how to do amazing time remapping in After Effects today, all trying to make a TikTok, but the greater learning, the greater value is the time remapping that you learned from this tutorial. So congratulations to you, congratulations on your TikTok. Make sure you tag me in your video, at Naughty and Sands, so I can see the beautiful work that you've created. If any part of this tutorial was a little confusing, why don't you go back and re-watch it again. Drop a comment in the comment section below, smash that mother like button, and if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and also check out the last video that you missed. We're doing more than one a week now during quarantine. I don't know what's going on. I I'm sick of doing TikTok videos, but if you guys want to see any other TikTok tutorials, let me know. Subscribe, check out the last video, and I will see you next time.